Okay, welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. We are in Judges. It's a long story today. It's a uh, fairly complex, has good and bad in it, but it tells you like it is, and that's what I love about the Bible, and that's what God wants of us, just be honest. If you mess up, say, yep, I did it, I'm sorry. doesn't matter if you're a, a preacher, a pope, electrician, professional bodybuilder, a farmer, a mommy, a kid in school, doesn't matter. God just wants you to be honest. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Help me get back up, get back on the narrow road unto eternity, and get back in the Word. And that's where we're at today, Judges chapter 8. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou calledest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites, and they did chide with him sharply? You know, last time, as we were in Judges, Gideon had the, the big battle, uh, if you remember, with a very small army, conquered a huge mass, or rather the Lord conquered them, and they just came in to, to, to clean up, you know, smooth out the rough edges, shall I say. Verse 2. And he said unto them, What have I done now in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezar? God hath delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. What was I able to do in comparison of you? Then their anger was subsided. In other words, they, Gideon said the right words. And sometimes that's, you know, there's a heated situation. And it's like, you can't really take sides. You just say, look, we did the best we could, and hey, you got a good deal out of it. You know, uh, There was forgiveness, there was fellowship, and accept it. Just accept that as the, you know, the hand of you know, reconciliation or whatever. And so Gideon said the right words. Verse 4. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint yet pursuing them. He said unto the men of Sukkoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, for they be faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. They were faint. In a con even in a combat situation, you've got to take a time down. Hey, guys, break into your MREs, have a, have a cup of coffee, you know, a protein drink, you know, whatever you have, a chocolate bar. Just take a time out. Just pull back just a hair. Let them regroup, take a breath, get a little bite to eat, you know, use the facilities, whatever. Take a break and then pick, pick arms back up and, and go on. And that's what Gideon was hoping to do here with the city. And he said unto the men of Sukkoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto us that follow me, for they are faint. And I am pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. So Gideon really didn't have time to gather up MREs and rations and so forth for all the troops. And God just said, get out there. And God's going to prepare the way. And so basically, he's, the Lord's showing them, these guys are not on your side. So understand, you know, when you come to clean up, these guys are going to be part of the plan. Verse 6. And the princes of Sukkoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thine army? Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord hath delivered Zeba and Zalmunna into mine hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And he went up thence to Penuel and spake unto them likewise. And the men of Penuel answered them. And he spake unto the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Ziba and Zalmunna were in Karkor, and their hosts with them, about 15,000 men, all that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east. For there fell 120,000 men that drew the sword. And Gideon went up by way of them that dwelt in tents on the east of Nobah and Jogbega, and smote the hosts, for the host was secure. 
And when Ziba and Zalmunna fled, he pursued after them and took the two kings of Midian, Ziba and Zalmunna, and discomfited all the host. And Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle before the sun was up and caught a young man of the men of Sukkoth and inquired of him. And he described unto him the princes of Sukkoth and the elders thereof, even threescore and seventeen men. And he came unto the men of Sukkoth and said, Behold, Ziba and Zalmunna, with whom you did upbraid me, saying, Are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna now in thine hand? Shall we give you bread? And he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briars with them and whipped the men of Sukkoth. That's a Mideastern custom. It spares your life. You've done the, the wrong thing of some sort. You've offended somebody. You don't get the death penalty, but you get punished to some extent. It goes on still in Oriental and Mideast cultures. Then he beat down the tower of Penuel, and he slew many men of the city. To what extent, we're really not sure. They did go in and clean up. Then said he unto Ziba and Zalmunna, What manner of men were they whom he slew at Tabor? They answered, Art thou? So were they. Each one resembled the children of a king. And he said, They were my brethren, even the sons of my mother, as the Lord liveth. If we had saved them alive, I would not slay you. So, Gideon gives them the, okay, you had my brethren in your hands. What did you do with them? Did you slay them or did you spare them? They say, well, we slay, we slay them. We, we killed them. We, we executed them. And so Gideon says, if you would have just spared them, I would spare you. So now it's down to the sins of their past now have caught up to them. And previously, Gideon wasn't at war with them, but obviously bad things had been done. So these little handful of gentlemen that are responsible, these two particular, if there was more or less, you know, of, of a handful not really sure, but for sure, these two guys, these two particular guys, Ziba and Zalmunna, they're leaders. If you spared them, I would spare you now, but you didn't. And he said unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. He was still, he was still in, in combat training. He's been watching Dad. He's kind of been through boot camp, but not quite, you know, battle seasoned for doing executions on the spot. Then Ziba and Zalmunna said, Rise thou and fall soon on us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Ziba and Zalmunna and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Kind of interesting. The earring culture over there in the Islamabad neck of the woods, the Ishmaelites, they had earrings, gold earrings, and they put gold, gold rings and stuff on their camels' necks, too. So they were, they were well endowed with gold in that neck of the woods. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And that's the right answer. Regardless of who's the president in office, Jesus is still the boss. So recognize that when you take the leadership and you sign pieces of paper and, you know, send out the troops or bring the troops back. Realize Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the boss over this world. Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that you would give me every man earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, 
we will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast her in, every man earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, besides ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and besides the chains that were about their camels' necks. Interesting, right? Gold, gold chains around their necks. You know, they were, they were hooked up. They had some, uh, what do you call that? Bling, 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 yeah, bling. They had a lot of, the camels had bling on. Gold, amazing. And Gideon made an ephod there. That was a big, like, chess piece, like, uh, like, like combat military, you know, guys, you know, have a, uh, you know, when you're in the military, they give you the flak jacket. You can fit a lot of stuff in it, you know, when you're going through uh, boot camp and you get out in the field and you're out in the fleet, you know. It, uh, it's a flak jacket, but it also has lots of pockets in it. You can put a lot of stuff in there. And they, they made something like that. It was called an ephod, and they made it out of gold. And it was could have been cool, but this is what Israel wrote. And they put it in his city, even in Ophrah, and all Israel went thither, a harloting after it, with which became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. You know what they were doing to it? They were coming in and doing like the Islamabub do, coming in, bobbing their head and hitting the ground. And the Buddhists, too, they're bobbing their head on the ground in front of this as if it had some power. You know, Man, man just wants to bang his head on the ground worshiping something fake. You know, why? I don't know. Why not lift your eyes to the heavens and worship the Son of God seated at the right hand of the Father? Because He's the only God in this universe, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yahweh don't need you to bang your head on the mat. All you need to do is confess your sins and repent of them and turn back to Him. That's all He asks. And recognize what He did on the cross it was a done deal. Now you just have to receive it and keep His commandments. Obey Him. Follow in the Word of God. Get on the narrow road. Keep your life clean. When you fall, get dirty, get up. Let them wash you clean. You don't need to bang your head on the rug or on a wall or a rock. Confess your sins. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel so that they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. And Jeroboam, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had threescore and ten sons that he had begotten, for he had many wives. He also had a concubine that was in Shechem, and she also bare him a son whose name he called Abimelech. Once again, that was standard practice in those days. It wasn't wrong for them, and that's just the way it was. They had many wives, they had concubines, all for the purpose of spiring many offsprings and sons. The Orient has that still, to, to some extent. Uh, in certain African cultures, um, uh, uh, Hawaiian cultures. It's just the way it is. And they were, they were brought into them, and they were considered as a wife, all the wives. And he took care of them, and he was responsible for them. And they were faithful to him, and he had them. That was his, his I don't, don't want to say harem, but that's the way it was. Here in the United States, you know, that's against the law. You get one wife, that's it. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash's father in Ophrah of the Abazites. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went harloting after Balaam and made Baal Beroth their god. So man just, just keeps going to it. Well, you know, they want to bang their head on the ground and go and kiss a golden statue or light a candle in front of a nun or something. You don't need to do that. Confess your sins to Jesus Christ. He'll wash you clean. Get back in the Word of God or start, if you never have, start reading the New Testament, the Old Testament. Spend some time in prayer and singing praise songs to the Lord. All the above. If all you know is rock songs, and listen to them and change the words to praise songs. That's great. You know, give God glory in everything you do. You don't need to be banging your head on something. All right, enough of that. And the children of Israel 
remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jeroboam, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed them unto Israel. Man forgets. Boy, Gideon just delivered Israel from the hand of the, the mobs of the millions of the Midianites and all their clan. And Israel's already forgotten. Sad, but it's human nature. That's, that's what we do. You know, in times are tough. We're calling out, God, have mercy. And when God has really blessed us, then what's the, the thing? It's, oh, we got to get busy and, you know, don't forget who rescued you from this world's sin, most importantly, and from the troubles that you were just in. Give God the glory, for he is worthy. God bless you, friends. See you next time.